This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. In this video, we are going to showcase the quintessential cards needed to build the core of a Cascade Commander deck with Abaddon the Despoiler as the general. Abaddon the Despoiler debuted as the front-facing commander option to the Ruinous Powers pre-constructed EDH deck from the Warhammer 40k commander product. Abaddon is a 5-5 Astartes warrior with trample for two in Grixis colors. That's a blue, a black, and a red mana. During our turn, spells we cast from our hand with mana value X or less have Cascade, where X is the total amount of life our opponents have lost this turn. Abaddon's two spells for one ability allows us to utilize our library as an extension of our hand, as each spell we cast from our hand triggers a spell to be cascaded into from our library. As such, we are going to sculpt the core of this build with various ways for our opponents to lose life, in addition to ensuring that our hand is filled with cards for the purposes of maximizing Abaddon's ability. Casting a spell from our library upon casting a spell from our hand should enable us to out-tempo and out-resource our opponents on the path to imminent victory. We begin the core of this build with a slate of cards that make our opponents lose life at the beginning of our upkeep. Creeping Bloodsucker deals 1 damage to each opponent, and we gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. Remember, damage causes loss of life. If we choose dragons when Palace Siege enters the battlefield, then at the beginning of our upkeep, each opponent loses two life and we gain two life. Stormfist Crusader has each player draw one card and lose one life. Here, we are gifting each opponent with a free card, but their cumulative life loss will be our gain as we cascade into free spells with our general. Sanctum of Stone Fangs has each opponent lose X life and we gain X life, where X is the number of shrines we control. Even if this is the only shrine in the build, we are setting the stage for Abaddon to work his magic. As long as we have the City's Blessing, Twilight Prophet has us reveal the top card of our library and put it into our hand. Each opponent loses X life and we gain X life, where X is that card's mana value. We have the City's Blessing for the rest of the game, as long as we control at least 10 permanents. Protection Bracket has us repeat the following process for each opponent in turn order. We reveal the top card of our library. That player may pay life equal to that card's mana value. If they do, then we exile that card. Otherwise, we put it into our hand. Aside from revealing land cards, our opponents are forced to choose between losing life or putting cards into our hand. When Court of Ambition enters the battlefield, we become the Monarch. At the beginning of our upkeep, each opponent loses 3 life unless they discard a card. However, if we're the Monarch, instead each opponent loses 6 life unless they discard 2 cards. The Ruinous Powers has us choose an opponent at random. We exile the top card of that player's library, and until end of turn, we may play that card, and we may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. When we cast a spell this way, its owner loses life equal to its mana value. This enchantment provides card advantage and potential life loss by our opponents. We have a couple of combat-related options as well. At the beginning of combat on our turn, if we control our commander, then Loyal Subordinate has each opponent lose 3 life. Whenever Tectonic Giant attacks or becomes a target of a spell an opponent controls, we can choose to deal 3 damage to each opponent, or we can choose to exile the top 2 cards of our library. We choose one of these cards, and until the end of our next turn, we may play that card. These options provide great cascading potential during our second main phase. There are a few planeswalkers in the core of this build that enhance our life loss theme. Gaia Drone Dehada has a plus one loyalty ability that has each opponent lose two life and we gain two life. 
We then put a corruption counter on up to one other target creature or planeswalker. Gaia Drone also provides an option to gain control of target creature or planeswalker for a turn, untapping it, putting a corruption counter on it, and giving it haste until end of turn. We also could gain control of each permanent with a corruption counter on it. Chandra Torch of Defiance has a plus one loyalty ability that exiles the top card of our library. We may cast that card, and if we don't, then Chandra deals two damage to each opponent. Chandra's other abilities include Mana Acceleration, dealing direct damage to creatures, as well as creating an emblem with, whenever we cast a spell, this emblem deals 5 damage to any target. In this Abaddon build, Chandra's emblem could end a game very, very quickly. Angrath the Flame Chain has a plus 1 loyalty ability that has each opponent discard a card and lose 2 life. Angrath's other abilities include End of Turn Creature Theft or Sacrifice and having each opponent lose life equal to the number of cards in their graveyard. Abaddon approves. We have Instant and Sorcery options as well. Delayed Blast Fireball deals 2 damage to each opponent and each creature they control. If we cast this spell from Exile, then it deals 5 damage to each opponent and each creature they control instead. Note that casting Delayed Blast Fireball through Cascade is casting it from Exile. As an option, we can pay the foretell cost of this card. During our turn, we can pay 2 generic mana and exile this card from our hand face down. This is another avenue to getting Delayed Blast Fireball into Exile. We can cast it on a later turn for its foretell cost. Note that Delayed Blast Fireball deals 5 damage if it was cast from Exile for any reason. It does not have to be from its Foretell ability. One of the modes from Maestro's Charm has each opponent lose 3 life and we gain 3 life. Its other modes include Card Advantage and dealing direct damage to target creature or planeswalker. Fiery Confluence allows us to choose 3 modes and we may choose the same mode more than once. Most appealing for the theme of this deck is to deal 2 damage to each opponent. Its other modes include dealing 1 damage to each creature and destroying target artifact. Casting our instant and sorcery spells expedites the life loss process when paired with any of the following cards. Rona, Shieldred's Faithful, has each opponent lose 1 life. We also may cast Rona from our graveyard by discarding 2 cards in addition to paying its other costs. Exalted Flamer of Teench deals 1 damage to each opponent. Also, at the beginning of our upkeep, we return an instant or sorcery card at random from our graveyard to our hand. Gutter Snipe deals 2 damage to each opponent, and we can tap Thermo Alchemist to deal 1 damage to each opponent, and whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, we untap it. Both Firebrand Archer and Kessig Flame Breather expand their damage dealing trigger to include any non creature spells we cast as they deal 1 damage to each opponent each time we do so. With various ways to gain life in this build, including Descent into Avernus may not be as detrimental as it first appears. At the beginning of our upkeep, we put two Descent counters onto this enchantment. Then each player creates X treasure tokens, and Descent into Avernus deals X damage to each player, where X is the number of Descent counters on it. Although the self-inflicted damage dealt by this enchantment can be mitigated by the aforementioned sources of life gain sprinkled throughout this build, gifting our opponents with mana acceleration is generally not ideal. However, within the confines of the theme of this deck, the treasures created by Descent into Avernus helps us cast spells from our hand, which leads to more free spells through Abaddon's Cascade ability. This two-for-one spellcasting dynamic, in addition to the already showcased peripheral synergies and benefits tied to it, should adequately hedge against providing our opponents free mana acceleration. This makes Descent into Avernus a powerful inclusion in this build. Speaking of powerful inclusions, Neheb the Eternal enhances our life loss cascade theme. At the beginning of our post-combat main phase, we add one red mana to our mana pool for each one life our opponent lost this turn. As we have demonstrated already in this video, we can cause our opponents to lose a lot of life in this build, and Neheb rewards us with free red mana for doing so. Our opponents will not approve. We have options to accelerate the damage dealt to our opponents. 
if a source we control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, Sulfim Mayhem Dominus doubles that damage instead. We also can pay 1 and 2 red Phyrexian mana and discard 2 cards to put an indestructible counter on Sulfim. A red Phyrexian mana can be paid by either 1 red mana or 2 life. Fiery Emancipation and City on Fire triples the damage dealt to permanents or players by sources we control. Whenever a source we control deals exactly one damage to a permanent or a player, Gearson Starn Kellermorph deals two damage to that permanent or player. If a red source we control deals damage to a permanent or player, Torbrand Thane of Redfell adds two points of damage. If another source we control would deal non-combat damage to a permanent or a player, Torwaki the Younger adds one point of damage. Whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, Torwaki deals two damage to any target. With any combination of these damage accelerators on our side of the battlefield, we should have little trouble cascading through our library and watching our opponent's life totals tick precipitously southward. With a suite of spells and effects dedicated to causing our opponents to lose life, we now turn our attention to enhancing our Cascade theme. Whenever we play a card from Exile, Prosper Tomebound creates a treasure token. Also, at the beginning of our end step, we exile the top card of our library. Until the end of our next turn, we may play that card. Remember, our Cascade spells are cast from Exile, and each time we cast one, it triggers Prosper. Whenever we cast a spell from Exile, now Feshni copies it. We may choose new targets for the copy. If it's a permanent spell, the copy gains haste, and at the beginning of the end step, it is sacrificed. Whenever we cast a spell from anywhere other than our hand, we may pay one in a blue mana or one in a red mana, if we do, then Mizzix Replica Rider copies that spell, and we may choose new targets for the copy. Again, if it's a permanent spell, the copy gains haste, and at the beginning of the end step, we sacrifice it. Whenever we cast a spell from anywhere other than our hand, Keeper of Secrets deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent. Passionate Archaeologist gives commander creatures we own, whenever we cast a spell from Exile, this creature deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to target opponent. Abaddon is a 5-5, and dealing 5 points of direct damage each time we cascade into a spell should lead to an eventual round of good games from our opponents. A spectrum of peripheral card-drawing effects helps us keep cards in our hand, which, in turn, helps us cascade into more and more free spells with Abaddon. Classic taxing enchantments like Mystic Remora and Rhystic Study put cards into our hand if our opponents fail to pay the taxes affixed to their spells. For more reliable card-drawing effects, we have Phyrexian Arena and Black Market Connections. At the beginning of our upkeep, the arena draws us a card and we lose one life, while Black Market Connections has us choose one or more of the following modes. We create a treasure token and lose one life. We draw a card and lose two life. We create a 3-2 shapeshifter creature token with changeling and lose three life. Remember, we have various ways to gain life in this build, which helps to mitigate the loss of life from these enchantments. We have sources of card advantage as well. Careful study and faithless looting are sorceries that has us draw two cards and then discard two cards. Faithless looting also has flashback, which can be cast from our graveyard for two and one red mana. It is then exiled. Is it charm and prismari command follow suit, but offer other modes from which to choose? For is it charm, we can counter target non creature spell unless its controller pays two generic mana, or we can deal two damage to target creature. For Prismari Command, we can deal 2 damage to any target, have target player create a treasure token, or destroy target artifact. Note that Is It Charm allows us to choose one mode, while Prismari Command allows us to choose two. Casting our instant and sorcery spells can provide card drawing benefits as well. Whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, Archmage Emeritus draws us a card. Whenever any player casts an instant or sorcery spell, niv Mizzet Perrin draws us a card. And whenever we draw a card, Nivy deals one damage to any target. We can consider Nivy a win condition in this build, especially when paired with Abaddon. 
Now it's time to bring this video to a close with a sampling of other cards that synergize with and enhance the theme of this build, beginning with Frantic Search and Factor Fiction. Frantic Search has us draw two cards and then discard two cards, and then we untap up to three lands. Let's not overlook the benefit of untapping up to three lands, particularly if we cascade into the spell, which could provide the mana needed to cast another spell from our hand, and then cascade again with Abaddon. Factor Fiction has us reveal the top five cards of our library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. We put one pile into our hand and the other into our graveyard. I do not sense any political gains will be made among our opponents by casting the spell. So we will choose the pile that best suits our needs and move one step closer to winning the game. Next up is Nightscape Familiar. It reduces the cost of our blue and red spells by one generic mana, and is a stalwart in defense with its regenerate ability. Whenever we cast a spell from anywhere other than our hand, we return Poxwalkers from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. It has Death Touch, and in defense, acts as a combat deterrent for our opponents. With a bevy of instant and sorcery cards included in the core of this build, adding Storm Kiln Artist should help accelerate our game plan even further. Whenever we cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, we create a treasure token. As our primary win condition is linked to having our opponents lose life, including Exquisite Blood helps to create a chasm-like disparity between our life total and our opponents, as whenever an opponent loses life, we gain that much life. Hopefully, we will gain our opponent's motivation to want to play Magic with us again in the future. This video provided a blueprint for building the core of a Cascade Commander deck with Abaddon the Despoiler as the general. The cards showcased during this video are suggested options for crafting the thematic core of a Cascade EDH deck, in addition to providing ways of optimizing this theme. Removal spells, disruption, ramp, and the land base can vary from build to build, and also are dependent on metagame preferences and availability. In building around videos like this one, these deck components are left in the hands of each individual deck brewer. If you found this video appealing, then be sure to check out our other Building Around videos through the playlist on your screen. Also be sure to check out our other deck building series, and don't forget to let me know your thoughts about the core of this Cascade build in the comments section below. This is MTG Burgeoning, a yo channel for all things magic.